welcome to another episode of Camp Kika. Always here to teach the people about God, humility, being classy, putting your ego down, knowing when to talk, when not to talk, knowing that when your mouth is closed you can't get in trouble, knowing that silence is golden, except when you're talking words of Torah. Then you should never be silent. Then you should come teach the people to educate the nation. You understand? So that we become better as a nation. Because we're each responsible for each other. That's in the Torah. God says if you see your neighbor making a sin and you don't say anything, his blood is upon you. Meaning you're guilty for that sin. You should also know that in this world, they have it beyond the reasonable doubt. That's how the secular... Uh, the nations of the world, that's how they run their courts, you know, beyond the reasonable doubt, God does it like this, beyond any doubt, it's not beyond any reasonable doubt, beyond any doubt, meaning if you're going to convict somebody in a court, it has to be guaranteed, cannot be taking chances, that's why you have innocent people that got killed on death row, but even though it looks like they're innocent, they're not, Hashem plugs it in and makes the puzzle complete. By putting somebody there that deserves to die. And this is how God does it. It's unbelievable how he does it. I always use the example that God forbid on a plane crash. It could be 300 people. Each person on that uh, plane was destined to die in a crash. God forbid. But that's how God runs the show. And you know it's true. Because you see some people like get delayed. They don't make the flight. And they get saved. So it's very interesting. How God is running the show. It's amazing. You have somebody on death row is innocent, right? So you're going to tell me, oh, but he's innocent. So where's the justice? No. Maybe he was guilty of another murder that you don't know about. And now he's got killed in this murder. To you, it looks like injustice. And Hashem exposes them as having a fake court system because they don't follow the word of God. When you make a court system, you got to do it by the knowledge of God. That's why you don't do the Robin Hood mentality. You don't steal from the rich and give to the poor. Hashem gave the rich money to test them to see if they're going to use it for charity or are they going to hoard it and use it for material things. That's why it gives them money. What do you think? The money comes from your intelligence? It doesn't. It may look like that, but it doesn't. King Solomon already told us that. Ain lechachamim lechem. You know what I mean? Just because you're smart doesn't mean you're going to get money. The money comes from God. Bless him. Understand. Work on yourself. Fix what you need to fix. And he'll give you the money, yo. Trust me when I tell you. And he'll give it to you in even a better way than you could have made it. That's how Hashem is. Hashem is on another level. You guys aren't understanding, man. But I know you will. The more you listen to my page, the more you're going to understand how great God is, bro. It's guaranteed it goes hand in hand. You know what I mean? Really, it goes hand in hand. I'm going to tell you something that's deep right now. Listen. One of the reasons why God does not allow the sale of a dog for a sacrifice... Is because dogs are very brazen. They're very territorial. They're ready to kill. They're ready to destroy. They're ready to bite. Plus, they have no self-control. That's why when they were on Noah's Ark, they had relations and Hashem punished them. It's crazy. That's why Hashem does not allow dogs to be sold and to use that money to bring a sacrifice. Not allowed. Also, from the sale of prostitution. Hashem doesn't want your dirty money, bro. That's why if you rob somebody and give that money to the poor, that's a mitzvah, baba avera, it's an avera. Cannot do a mitzvah, do a sin. That automatically means it's a sin because it's attached to a sin. And I'm going to tell you some secrets right now, deep, man, so you understand what life's about. It says in the Gemara, the face of the generation will be the face of a dog. So I'm asking you, what would be a better animal to use? Face of a pig. People are they're pigs. They're slobs. They're gross. No, Hashem doesn't use pig. He uses dog. You know why? Because if you go up to the pig and you slap it, it's probably not going to do anything to you. Now go slap a dog. See what he's going to do for you. The pig is humble. (laughs) Do you understand? Maybe that's why he tastes good for the goyim. Hashem gave them a gift. Why? Because he's humble. That's why. But the dog... Ready to kill. He's ready to attack. Arr, 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 all day. Bark for the next 10 years. And the Gemara says it's like the Satan. You know why? <laughs> because the Satan, he's always looking to pounce on you and attack. So the dog, if you're playing cards at your house and the dog is annoying, you, you know, send him out the room and shut the door. 
he will stand by that door and one of the kids maybe will come and open the door a crack boom he'll slide right in that's the satan that's the satan the satan can be like a dog he doesn't give up the dog is relentless just like we're compared to ants why because the ants work really hard they don't stop working that's what king solomon said you should be like an ant why like an ant you know why because it doesn't stop moving you ever see an ant chilling with his legs crossed one on top of the other, with a bottle of lemonade relaxing, you're never going to see it. <laughs> constantly moving and working. That's what we need to do. Is constantly direct ourselves into the path of God to get closer to Him. Because when you're closer to Him, you got life. When you're closer to Him, you got everything you need. Everything you need. And it reminds me of a story that's beautiful. There's only two times in the Torah where God says, I will give you long life. One is for Shluch HaKen, sending away the mother bird. And the other one is respecting your mother and father. So there's a story in the Gemara of a rabbi that left the religion because he didn't understand what I'm about to tell you. And he saw his son, he said to his son, go to Shluch HaKen, you know, to get long life. So he went to go to the Mitzvah of Shluch HaKen and as he was climbing the ladder, he fell and died. So how can it be? He was doing Shluch HaKen. He was honoring his father. Psh, I'm not getting it. He's honoring Hashem by doing the Mitzvah and he died? So the answer is yes. It's not a contradiction. Because the life that Hashem is, is promising us in the Torah is long life. Life where? Life where? Not here. Here it's not a long life. It's 78 years and you die. Long life means for eternity. It's in the next world is where the reward is. You understand? Maybe Hashem did it to test his faith. And he failed, God forbid. But it's a lesson to be learned, man. What you see with your eye. I'll give you an example. The Gemara say, says if a man is married to a woman and dress him modest, he won't make money. He won't have money. That's not true. I know a lot of people are married to very immodest women and they're very rich. So what, it's a contradiction? It's no contradiction. He could have been richer. You don't get it. You don't get it. You got to use your brain, bro, and understand with the Torah, you got to go deep. And when you go deep, you're going to find the secrets that God has laying there waiting for the ones that are willing to dig deep into his treasury. And I'm one of those dudes that are willing to dig all the way deep. I want to find, I want to look. I'll go on a manhunt, I'll search for him. But on a God hunt, not a man hunt, searching for him. But I don't got to search that far. You know why? Because he's right inside of me. He's the one that's allowing me to talk. I bite my tongue, I can't speak. Look, so what are you telling me? That meat makes you speak? Yes. When God is involved, meat will make you speak. Put that in a rhyme, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the way it goes, man. And I love giving these talks, you know what I mean? Because I'm blessed by Hashem and I appreciate that God. I really do. Man, I really do. You know I do. You know I do. And Hashem, I want to tell you something else. The world has gone nuts, yo. I'm just letting you know, man. And I know there's many different examples I can give. But I'm just using this right now with the vaccines, COVID, and the mass. These people have lost their everlasting mind, yo. You know why? Because they're making kids mask up over two years old. Are you crazy? First of all, you already see it's attacking people with pre-existing conditions, people over the age of 65, the younger people that catch it, get out of it, get a vaccine, don't get a vaccine, two shots, booster shot, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. I mean, are you kidding me? You guys have no idea what you're talking about. Shh, that's what you should do. Let me give you advice. If I was on TV and they asked me about COVID, I would tell you, number one, behave behave you won't get covid do your best to be the best you could be it'll be much less like i can't say you won't get it you might get it and get out of it i don't know but you'll be much more less likely to get it guaranteed guaranteed that's true that i could say with alacrity and conviction 100 percent you'll be protected by a force field and then you always pray to god to help you and protect you Work on your midot, fix what you need to fix, be nicer to your wife, be nicer to your children, be nicer to your boss, your boss, be nicer to your workers. Be nicer, be kind, bro. That's why the Beit HaMikdash, the second one was destroyed because we weren't kind to each other. We were rude, we had clicks, we would look down on each other. Like this one guy, bro, he says to me, you look like some black guy, the way you dress. I said, and, and so what, so what? So what, that takes away from my Torah knowledge? That takes away from how I treat your kids and how I teach them to get them closer to God? No. Don't judge a book by its cover, Achi. Judge me by my heart. Judge me by my soul. Don't judge me because you see my hat tilted to the back a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm being real. If you know Torah, you know what I'm saying? It's one million percent true. And I will say yes. At the same time, there is a way to get dressed. When you go to shul, you have to dress like you know. Like a mensch, I'm not saying no, absolutely that's true. But if you're the type like me that likes to wear t-shirts 
and shorts and you dress modest, I don't see what the issue is. You know what I mean? It's the satan is fooling you. That's what it is. But this one dude yesterday had me rolling. He's like, oh, you dress like some black guy. And I don't even dress like that black. You know what I mean? I dress like me. So I said to him, bro, that doesn't even affect me, bro. I'm like way too confident. You don't understand. Hashem made me understand not to care what people think. I only care. Hashem came to me and said what you said. Yes, it would affect me. But when you say it, it does not affect me at all. You understand? Because I don't expect too much from people. Check my children's book. I wish I was a nerd. <laughs> if you want that book, I'll send it to you in a PDF file. Email me. Camp Kika. K-I-C-A. Keep it classy always. At gmail.com. And I'll mail you a free copy. And you can show it to your kids. Bring it to your kid's school. Tell them to bring me in. I'll give them such a talk about bullying. I'll come in. I'll feature the book. And we'll have a great one and a half hour session. Charge you probably like 150 and I trust me it will be worth it because I will come you'll have me back I guarantee you that you will have me back well, I can't say that for sure nobody can guarantee anything only Hashem can but I am very confident that if I came to your school and gave the kids a talk on bullying they would 100% the kids would want me back that's for sure <laughs> That's for sure, man. The connection I have with kids, man. Come check it. It's amazing. I made that connection with adults. You an adult listen to this right now and you connected to it. So imagine the connection I have with kids. Let me tell you what I would say if I went to a school and spoke about my book. So the name of the book is called I Wish I Was a Nerd. I would read the kids the book. I would open up questionings about the book, you know, questions about the book. What did you guys think about the book? Any comments about the book? Anybody want to tell me what lessons we learned from the book? You know, and I would go deep into the book and I would teach them. This is what I would teach them. I would teach them, don't ever expect too much from people. It doesn't matter what people think. It only matters what God thinks. I would tell them the donkey story. I would tell them that when their mouth is closed, they can't get in trouble. Yes, there's many times you want to say something. But if you're just talking to talk and it's not words of Torah, check what's going to be. Usually you're going to gossip. Usually you're going to talk bad about people. Usually you're going to be silly. Usually you might curse, God forbid. You know what I mean? You'll get into some problems because the Satan is always waiting to attack. And you need to know that. Even if you're in third grade, I would tell you that with love. And I'll tell you a beautiful story. I was telling the kids that there is a thing called the Satan that he's going to attack. And he's going to force you to always do the wrong thing. He's going to try to trick you, trip you up. So one mother said, ah, give me a break. You can't even prove that. I said, I can't prove that. I'll prove to you that the Satan is already in us and that we have to control it. Ah, come on, coach, coach. You're exaggerating. Come on, come on. I said, okay, so listen, let's do this. Just sit, watch, watch what I'm going to do. I took 20 kids, put them in a circle, and I took a pink, shiny, diamond-looking ball, and I put it in the middle of the circle. So I looked at all the kids, and I said to them, listen, Whatever you do, do not look at this ball. I repeat, whatever you do, do not look at this ball. And what did all the kids do? Including the mother, look at the ball. Why? Because when somebody tells you not to do something, instinctually, King Solomon said it, you're going to want to go against it. You're going to want to do it. 100%, bro, if you're clever, you got what I just said, man. Trust me when I tell you, yo. Think about it. You tell them don't do it, they do it. Why? That's the Satan. He's a genius. Even at a young age, he's trying to trip you up. And you know who defeats the Satan? And you're never going to kill those desires. Or you can't. Those are part of attached to your soul. But you can control them. And that's what Hashem wants you to do. Hashem made the world in such a way that you could do something kosher, in a kosher way, and it will be loved by God. And if you do that same thing in a non-kosher way, it will be despised by God. So you're going to ask me, bring you a proof? I'll give you the best proof. Having relations with your wife, it's not an ugly thing. It's the most beautiful thing you can ever do in the world because you bring life to the world. But if you do it without being married, it's despised in the eyes of God. I just told you. Let me take a quick sip of my tea. Thank you, Hashem. I shouldn't say amen after a bracha, but so I take it back. But I didn't really say the bracha, I just said thank you, God, for letting me drink the tea. But if I said bracha ta Hashem, you don't say amen on that, but you say it 
loud enough that other people will say amen. But if you say like I did, thank you God for letting me drink this tea, amen, I think you could say that. We'll have to maybe look into it deep. That's what I like about Torah, it's deep. It's not just so simple, you know, like you look and think, okay, yeah, yeah, I want to. No, you got to look deeper, peel back the layers, see what it is. And you know how you do that? By studying the Word of God. The more you study the Word of God, the more you're in understanding. That's the word. The more you're attached to God, the more you're understanding how He works. The more you're understanding why He does what He does. The more you're understanding that when a tragedy happens, it's for us to wake up. The more you're understanding that before He gives you a big slap, He might slap your car, God forbid. That's why your car should keep Shabbat, like my car does. What do you mean your car keeps Shabbat? What do you mean? I don't drive it on Shabbat. My car keeps Shabbat. Just like a dunk. There was a rabbi. He was called something Ben Chamor. They called him the son of a donkey. You know why? It wasn't even disrespect. It was actually to praise the donkey. Because he was a non-Jew. Or a Jew. Sorry, he was a secular Jew. And he bought a donkey from a rabbi. And the rabbi told the donkey. That's just crazy. The donkey kept Shabbat. So when the rabbi sold the donkey to the non-Jew or to the to the secular Jew I forgot who it was I think it might have been a secular Jew or even a non-Jew that converted and became a rabbi maybe we'll say a non-Jew that converted and became a rabbi so he said to him when he sold it to this non-Jew he said to the donkey listen now you don't work for me anymore oh that's what happened he sold it to the non-Jew the non-Jew took it worked with it on Shabbat and the donkey wouldn't work so he called up the Jew he said hey what kind of a donkey did you sell me what is the donkey he's an amazing donkey but he doesn't work on Friday night to Saturday night what's going on so the rabbi said, oh, I know what's going on. Let me come over and I'll fix it. So the rabbi came over and he came to the donkey, gave it a hug, rubbed him on the side. He said, listen, my brother, you don't work for me anymore. So you don't have to keep Shabbat. You understand? Now you work for a goy, you can, you can work on Friday night and it's all love. So the donkey like nodded his head and went to the goy. So the goy went and that Shabbat came. He wanted to see, you know. Shabbat came, the donkey worked like no problem. So he was so impressed that he called this rabbi. He said, I want to convert. He converted and became a rabbi. Why? Because the donkey, he said, if the donkey can keep Shabbat and get to such a high level, I can also do that. I can also keep Shabbat. I'm not a Jew, so I'm not allowed to keep Shabbat. But if I convert, I'll end up keeping Shabbat. And he became a rabbi, Ben Chamor. (laughs) By the way, there's people in the Torah named Chamor. Chamor, the father of Shechem. Shem was the one that raped Dina. Shimon and Levi were the ones that went to go avenge her rape and was cursed by Jacob. You know why? Because they went too far. Just like the nations of the Goyim, when Hashem chooses them to punish us, they also go too far. That's why you always leave the revenge to Hashem. He knows exactly the punishment the person deserves. You know why? Because he knows what goes on behind the scenes. You might look at a guy that's very arrogant and pompous, and yes, Hashem is going to bury him and put his face in the mud eventually if he doesn't do tshuva. That's guaranteed. But you don't know. Maybe there's one person he saved. Maybe he gives money on the side to help a poor family. You just don't know. You don't know. That's the beauty of life. Life, I'll be honest with you, it's a mix of good and bad. It's just how much good and how much bad. If you're 90% good and 10% bad, Eventually you can rub that out and go to heaven. But if you're 50% good and 50% bad, it's going to be very hard to fix that. You know why? Because the bad is that powerful. Think about it. Pure spring water, one gallon. I take one drop of oil, put it in, you will not drink it. I just ruined a gallon of great tasting water. With one drop of oil? Yes. One drop of gasoline will destroy that whole thing. And you see, like, if you leave a bunch of apples together and one gets rotten, they all end up getting rotten, you understand? Misery loves company, even with the fruit. Sick. How Hashem puts these things in my mind, it's amazing. And please don't think I'm bragging or boasting, bro. I'm saying it more that I'm appreciative. It's the opposite. I'm telling Hashem, thank you. I'm humbling myself in front of Hashem and telling Him, thank you for giving me these things to say. Because the more I say, the more I feel like I pray. And the more I pray, the devil I slay. But the devil you can't slay. So you have to be okay with letting him be around. But just know, you got to put the ego down. (laughs) I just have to kick a little rhyme, yo. And let you know that I do that too.
PE coach, counselor. Nah, I don't even want to start because then it's going to sound like I'm bragging, bro. Just to let you know, with the knowledge of Torah, you can do anything, bro. You could be a principal. You could be a PE coach. You could be a counselor. You could run an after-school program. You're going to open a boys and girls club for kids, for Jewish kids. You can do anything you want, bro. Once you have the knowledge of the Torah, you can go to the President of the United States. Lives bill that I would even go there and give him a speech and teach him right from wrong with spiritual wisdom, like telling him you never do kindness for an ungrateful person. And you, my president, well, you're not my president, God forbid I should say it like that. The president of the United States, and I happen to live in the United States, so technically you would say he is my president, unfortunately, but I would tell him. You're pro-gay marriage, bro. You're pro-abortion. You don't get it, huh? You don't get it. Okay, maybe you'll get it when you die and you stand in front of Hashem to get judged. Then you're going to really get it. You get fooled by the devil. I mean, spiritual wisdom, I can teach you not to be like that. I'll teach you that after 40 days, it's a soul. And it feels, it has feelings. You don't want to kill a baby. You don't want to kill a baby. You had a baby, God forbid, in premarital relations. Then you should either keep that baby or give it away. But to murder it? Absolutely not. Now, if you do it before 40 days, it's still a sin. But it's definitely not even probably a quarter as bad. Because once it gets a soul, that's it. Now it's a living, breathing being. And how is the baby breathing inside of a belly? So amazing. Eating, breathing, sleeping, chilling, and studying Torah inside the belly. When you haven't gotten involved, that's what happens, man. That's what happens when God is involved. Like I say, anything is possible. Anything. Anything, bro. I told you, man. He could take this world and flip it like a coin. <laughs> and hopefully he will not do that. But you keep playing with him, he's going to do it. But he would never do it. You know why? Because he doesn't want to destroy the world. He'll punish the world. Look at this seaweed by my beach. Forget about the people in charge that don't clean it. They're going to get into such a problem with God because of that. From the sea lice, from the garbage. It's already a public health issue because it's already black, the seaweed. It smells bad. It brings flies. It brings lice. Very disgusting. But it's God's beach, man. Forget about the people in charge that clean the beach. The people on the beach that should pinch their heart. That's why I wanted to show the people. I went and grabbed a lot of the seaweed, put it in bags, and put it on the side. Why? Because I wanted to show the people on God that I don't just complain about it because it hurts. I do something about it. You know what I mean? Like I remember one rapper used to say, and I like this. Well, how did he say it? He said, why shoot the breeze about it when you can be about it? I like that. Why talk about it when you can just do it? You understand? No need to talk. Talk is so cheap. God, is talk cheap. God, forgive me. It's not. In the time of the Torah, talk was not cheap. Talk should be very expensive. It should be very coveted. But it's not. It's cheap. It's gossip. It's putting people down. It's bullying. It's being rude. It's giving a dirty look with your eye. And you know what? When you give a dirty look with your eye, your eye is going to suffer. You're going to suffer. Your brain is going to suffer. You know why? Because the eye leads to the brain. There's a tunnel to behind your eye that's why you put the tefillin not ben and echem, between your eyes yes it's ben and echem, but your eyes are up here like you know where an animal will have two horns right in the middle right by the hairline that's where your eyes are right in between that's where we put the tefillin the eyes are really to make it real clear where the animal has horns that's where your eyes are touch right there and that's where your eyes emanate from where are they they're embedded in your brain that's why when you look at ugly and modest things, it affects your brain. And when you look at pure holy things like a baby, it purifies your brain. It's amazing how the brain is constantly being dirtied and purified. Or dirty, or just purified, depending on who you are. If you want it to get purified, you study Torah. It's very simple, man. That will clean all the dirt out of your brain, out of your soul. For real, the brain is the soul should know that and it fills up the entire body that's why you can move your finger without even saying anything you don't even have to command your finger to move hey finger move no you just make it move it's already involuntary you can do it without even thinking about it well not involuntary but just without thinking about it very amazing 
how God made the world, how he set it up, and how he put us in it for a test, to test us, to see where we're going to end up. <laughs> it's exactly what it is, yo. And if you don't know it, now you know. Let's see if I have any good stories right now to tell you. I think I do. I'll tell you the story about Lashon Hara. So there were these two girls, they were on a, on a bus in Israel, in Shalayim. And they were talking bad about this girl, Rachel. She's getting married to a guy named Yossi. And they were like, ah, poor Yossi. If you only knew what he's getting into. She's a slob. She doesn't take showers. She did. She that. She gossips all day. <laughs> They're the ones gossiping about her. You know how this is, bro. The devil's a genius. The Satan is a genius. Oh, she's a gossiper. She did. I heard this. Oh, did you hear this? And she did this, and, and they're ripping this girl, Rachel, to shreds. Ripping her like a red-headed piranha. So, there was this lady sitting behind them. And she got up, and she tapped both the girls on the shoulder. And the girls got up, turned around, and she hugged them. And the girls looked at her like she was crazy. She said, why are you hugging us? She said, what do you mean? I'm Yossi's mother. Thank God I heard what you just said. My son is supposed to get married next week. Thank God I'm going to call him right now and cancel the wedding. They go, no, 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 no. Please, please, please don't do that. No, we were just jealous. She's actually very pretty and nice and this. We like her. No, no, she's so kind and she did this and did so. No, no, we were jealous. Please forgive me. They were like trying to do chuba. So the lady looked at both of them and you know what she said to them? She said, I'm not Yossi's mother. I'm just a Jew that cares about other Jews. And I wanted to teach you a lesson. It's not good to talk gossip. It's not good to be jealous. You understand? Learn the lesson. You can get into big trouble with God. Work on that. So they looked at her and they said, okay, we will. We will. You know why they will? I'll tell you why. Because they were afraid they were going to get shamed. Because the minute she would have called Josie and canceled the, the wedding or tried to do something to cancel the wedding... That would have caused big problems in the neighborhood. Everybody would have known it's them. People would have got mad at them. People would have given them dirty looks. People would have shunned them. For that shame and pain, they had to confess that they were jealous. And that's why they were destroying this girl. Ah, man, I like that story. That's a good one. And I also like the story with the Chavetz Chaim. Somebody said to him, how do you do chula for the Shonara? So he said, I'm going to tell you how. It was a windy day. He told the guy, get a pillow and meet me on the roof. So the guy looks at the Chavetz Chaim like, what are you talking about? Get a pillow on the roof. He goes, you want to do the chula or you don't? He said, no, Rabbi, I do. He goes, yalla, meet me upstairs. They meet him on the roof. He has a pair of scissors with him because he told him also bring a pair of scissors and bring some, a sewing machine. <laughs> so he looked at the Rabbi, Rabbi, come on, come on. He said, listen, you want to do chula or you don't? He said, I do. He said, then get the sewing machine and bring it up. So now he has... Everything he needs, all the tools. So the Chavetz Chaim said, listen, take this pillow, open it up, cut it. Take all the feathers, bang on the pillow, and take all the feathers out of the pillow. Now, mind you, it's a super windy day. Super windy. Maybe 25 mile an hour winds. And the feathers are flying everywhere. Yo, yo, this guy's looking at the feathers flying away. And he's like, what's he doing, man? He just destroyed my pillow. So he looks at the rabbi, he goes, well, you have fun making uh, damage to my pillow. So the rabbi said, God forbid, I'm trying to teach you a lesson. He said, what's the lesson? He said, the lesson is if you want to do chuba for speaking Lashon Hara, each one of these feathers is a conversation that you had of Lashon Hara. Now you got to go get all these feathers and take it back and bring it back inside the pillow, sew the pillow back to the way it was. Go ask each one of them for forgiveness. That's what it is. I'm just doing it with a pillow to show you how it's done. But technically, you'd have to go to each person you spoke Lashon HaRa about and ask for forgiveness for them. You can't even ask for forgiveness for Hashem because there's sins between man and God and there's sins between man and men. And that's why God cannot forgive you for a sin that you did to your brother. And when I say your brother, I don't mean your blood brother. I mean you're another Jew. Your brother's my brother. Some of you I don't want to be brothers with because you're disgusting. Excuse my language, Hashem. And I think Hashem will put a stamp on that. Bernie Sanders is disgusting. He goes against God. It's gross. And 
Hashem will take care of him. So you ask me, why is he succeeding? Why does he have money? Because God is feeding the pig. And I hope and pray for his sake he comes back. Why well, one lady told her husband that was a rabbi. He came and the kids were making fun of him. And he was a big one. I, I think her name was Buria, maybe Rab Meir, if I'm not mistaken. And he came home and there were kids in the neighborhood that were making fun of him. You know, throwing things at him. Rabbi, you're dumb, you're dead, God forbid. That's how they talk. The Rashaim, what do you think? The Rashot. The Rashaim, how do you think they talk? They'll put down a rabbi, no problem. So he comes home, he's all upset, cursing them to die. So his wife came to him said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why would you do that? He said, what do you mean, why would I do that? They deserve to die. She said, God forbid, you should pray for them. Pray for them. Don't let the devil fool you, he told her. She said, nah, don't let the Satan fool you, and I'll give you proof. Because it says God hates sins, not the sinner, but the sin. Meaning he loves his child. The only thing that's making him go against his child and bringing him pain is that he's sinning. Remove the sin, get the blessing. You know what I mean? I should put that on a t-shirt. Remove the sin, get the blessing. I like that. I could end it right now, but I won't. You know why? Because I'm going to tell you the story about this rabbi that was a genius, 10 years old. Before he was a rabbi, I was a young little kid, but I'm going to show you the smarts of this guy. So there was a big anti-Semitic Jew that lived in the neighborhood that used to smack Jews in the face. So one day he came up to this 10-year-old kid and slapped him. So this little kid took out money from his pocket and gave it to this anti-Semitic Jew. So the anti-Semitic Jew looked at him and said, what are you doing? Why are you giving me money? He said, what, you didn't hear? Today is a holiday that if you slap a Jew, he must give you whatever it is, what's ever in his pocket. If I was you, I'd go find the richest Jew and smack him. You're gonna get everything in his pocket. He'll probably give you everything in his house also. He'll probably see he's so scared because it's a holiday. It's a rule that you have to give money to the non-Jew when he slaps you. So he said, really? So he went to the richest guy in town the richest guy in town, guess what? Just happened to be best friends with all the policemen and all the judges. So he went up to him, he knocked on the door, the guy opens the door, he slapped him, boom! Give me all your money! So he turns around, he goes, Sarah, call Frank. Call Frank, Frank came, they arrested the guy. That's the genius of this rabbi. Just had to slide that story to let you know that the mind of a Jew could be on another level. Be Trust me when I tell you, I'll tell you another great story. A different rabbi, but just as good. There was a rabbi one day, he had a $5,000 antique Kiddush cup. And he was showing some of the congregants outside on the street, you know, this Kiddush cup that he just got. So all of a sudden, as he's showing it to everybody, some guy runs by, grabs the cup, and starts running. And the rabbi gives chase. So everybody's looking at the rabbi like, what are you doing? You just gave us a speech about trusting God. You're showing us the cup, and now you're going to chase this guy? The rabbi ignores them, he chases the guy, he makes a left, makes a right, he goes up, he goes down. Before you know it, he finds himself hiding behind the dumpster. So he waits like 30 seconds, he peeps out, and who's standing right there? The rabbi. So he looks at the rabbi, he goes, oh no, rabbi, rabbi, I'm so sorry, here, here, please take back the cup. So the rabbi said, nah, what are you doing? I didn't come for the cup. He said, so why would you chase me like this? He said, I chased you to tell you that the cup is worth $5,000. So when you sell the cup, Make sure you don't get less than 5000 So the guy looked at him. He said, oh, Rabbi, come on. Come on. You can't be serious. That's why you chased me? He said, yes. Yes. Why not? Why not? What am I going to do? I'm going to chase you, beat you up, and, and kill you? No, what's that going to do? Nobody's going to gain from that. Not you and not me. Better I teach you what it is to be a righteous person, inspire you, and you get closer to God. So he said to the rabbi, can you be my rabbi? He said, absolutely. Come meet me in the shul right now. Let's go talk. They went, they spoke, and he made this guy into a big mensch. And he was able to help other people that stole, gave them speeches about it, like this story right here, and motivated them. Because the greatest form of encouragement is motivation. No, I flipped it. The Satan is a genius. <laughs> the greatest form of motivation is encouragement. I'm going to chase you to kill you? No, I'm going to encourage you to be a better Jew. And that's exactly what he did. Amen. I love you, Hashem.